Well, hello and welcome to day 20. Today we're going to be looking at generosity and offerings. Now, we, we learned back in day two that the primary purpose of your money is to give it away to see the kingdom of God expand. We saw one way you can do that over the last three days in the area of the tithe. We're now going to look at how you can increase in generosity further and give offerings as well. Look, giving is in your nature. Our nature is to be like God. And salvation means that you are being, uh, in, you're in a process of being transformed into the likeness of God. And our God is a generous God. In uh, John 3.16, we see that God so loved the world that he gave. That was God's expression of love, that he gave. And what did he give? He gave his only son, Jesus. There's no more extravagant or expensive gift that God could have given than Jesus. Matthew 7, 11, Jesus says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? What Jesus is saying is that if you think you're a generous father, then take a look at God. By comparison, you're actually an evil father. God is a God who wants to be known by his giving, and he gives good gifts. Not mediocre gifts, but good gifts. And we can see that the Holy Spirit is the same. In 1 Corinthians 12, 4, we read, There are different types of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Just as God the Father gives good gifts, the Holy Spirit also gives different kinds of gifts. God is simply generous. And we as believers are called to this lifestyle of outrageous generosity. Now for some, generosity is a heart issue. You need to either break free of the power of mammon in your life or the spirit of poverty. And I'd suggest you revisit some of our earlier teachings on those issues. For others, it's a capacity issue. You have this desire to give, but you have an inability to give. There may be extreme debt issues, employment issues, or spending issues. And again, the principles in this book, in this, uh, these talks, will help you sort those out. I want to look at, for the rest of today's session, the different types of giving that the Bible talks about. Because there's so many ways you can demonstrate this generosity to others. The first is the tithe. We've looked at that, and we've looked at that in detail the last few days. But in Malachi 3.10, it says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. The next area of giving is to family. For God said, honour your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares what might have been used to help their father or mother is devoted to God, they are not to honour their father or mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of tradition. And that was Jesus saying this in Matthew 15.5. You can't claim to be a devout follower of Jesus if you're doing well but your family are in rags. It's a sign of devotion to God that you honour and protect your family with the income and wealth you possess. Third area of giving is sowing and reaping. In Galatians 6 it says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for whoever sows, that will also reap. And we'll look at this more in a later, se a later session. We also are to give to the poor and needy. Whoever's kind to the poor lends to the Lord and he will reward them for what they've done. You see the poor are close to God's heart. He promises that if we're kind to the poor he will reward us. Uh, it's an amazing example I think of what happened in the life of Cornelius. We read in Acts 10.4 the angel answered your prayers and gifts to the poor 
have come up as a memorial offering before God. So this is talking about Cornelius, the first non-Jewish man to be saved. What qualified Cornelius for such an honour? Well, in part, it was his gifts to the poor. God saw Cornelius' heart and decided to honour him in a most amazing way. We cannot know what we, you know, what we do to qualify ourselves to God, but we know that when we bless the poor, it's likely to produce amazing results. We're also called to give to churches and missions. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 8, 2, in the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. So we have a group of people there who didn't have a great deal, but they wanted to give as much as they could to support the mission of Paul uh, with their finances. Just imagine that when you get to heaven, you can stand with some of the great evangelists of our time because you have helped support them with your giving. And God will give you credit for the souls won through that ministry because you gave to support those missions. We can also give to honour others. And it says here in 1 Kings 10, 13, King Solomon gave queen, the Queen of Sheba all she desired and asked for beside what he had given her out of his royal bounty. There's a level of giving that goes beyond giving to meet needs. Solomon gave a gift to the Queen of Sheba, not because she needed it, she didn't need the money, but to honour her and to show who Solomon was. And we need to learn how we can use our giving to honour others who are worthy of honour and reflect the power of the kingdom of God working within us. It's easy to give where you see a need. It's only when we step into our place of kingship that we give to honour others. Let's pray today. Father, give me your heart for generosity. Amen.